Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel on YouTube, the joy of coding, things that make me happy that relate to code as well. Today's installment of this episode is brought to you by the fine folks at TypeScript. Not that they're sponsoring the video, but that this episode is all about TypeScript. It's a hot topic nowadays in the world of JavaScript, and I figured that we do a little bit of a multi-part installment about TypeScript. I think I can stop doing that now. I think you get the gist that I'm gonna be talking about TypeScript. Uh, just can't seem to quit saying the word. This episode is gonna be focusing on just a overview about what is TypeScript. Next episode, we're gonna start doing some actual code getting started with TypeScript, getting an actual sandbox environment working locally about actually letting you write TypeScript on your computer. And then we're gonna have some follow-up episodes as well and actually delve into some more of the nitty gritty details about how to actually use TypeScript. Stay tuned for those episodes. I'm pretty excited to write them, record them, code them, edit them, and then really just share them with you. If I could skip all that before that, then I'd be uh, not doing anything, I'd just be coding for myself. So what is TypeScript? It is a strict syntactical superset of JavaScript, which means that the syntax of TypeScript is has the same syntax as JavaScript, but more. And the more is what's special about TypeScript, which is that it adds uh, optional static typing to JavaScript. But what's important about that superset aspect of TypeScript is that any JavaScript application is by default a valid TypeScript application. It is a superset, which means that it incorporates all that inside of itself as well. Uh, the TypeScript project was first open sourced in October of 2012, which I didn't know until I was doing research for this video, but that is amazing to me that it's been around for almost seven years now. And it was after two years of internal development at Microsoft, and it's led by this guy named uh, Anders Held Hegelsberg, which I've never actually said out loud, just read many times. But what's neat about this guy is that he actually wrote uh, C Sharp and other languages as well, which means that he has experienced writing programming languages. And to tackle the squirrely nature of JavaScript and add typing to it, uh, gives me a lot of confidence that he's done this before. TypeScript is in by no means the first language to come out that adds strict typing to JavaScript. Uh, one of the first ones was actually this project called uh, Google Closure Compiler, that's C-L-O-S-U-R-E, not to be confused with Clojure, a JVM Java language. Uh, this was a project from Google, as you can tell from the name, it came out in 2009. And the way that it actually added typing to JavaScript, which is actually my most preferred way of doing it out of all these separate projects is it actually had you add uh, JS doc annotations, JS doc being a way to add, to format your comments on JavaScript code. And the closure compiler would read these comments, these structured JS doc comments, and that's how it get its typing information for your JavaScript application. Uh, it was written in 2009, it's been around for a while, very powerful still, still around, still used but not really used outside of Google as much because they never really tried to make it this big open source project. Another project that you might have heard about is Flowtype. That is a project from Facebook uh, that also does a similar way of adding type annotations as TypeScript where it puts the type annotations in line. So if you have uh, a name, you can say name colon string to say that the type of name is string. Um, there's been a lot of uh, turmoil in the Flowtype community, sadly, in the past couple of months where the uh, community has become largely disillusioned. Uh, my words, not theirs. And in many ways, it feels like TypeScript is becoming the de facto typing solution for JavaScript applications that are outside of Google or any other company that has their own bespoke typing system. It's kind of becoming like the de facto open source uh, type, uh, static typing JavaScript dialect, which is nice to have constellation around one language. TypeScript has many features that they've added over the many years of its development. It has generics, it has uh, classes. When it was first actually introduced, TypeScript had this feature of uh, namespaces. This is before ES modules were actually finalized. Uh, namespaces are kind of being, they're kind of a relic of 
the TypeScript passed, although there are still some valid use cases for it. But uh, more or less, when you write a TypeScript application, it looks mostly like a modern ES uh, uh, ES module using JavaScript application as well, except with types as well. Let's talk about why TypeScript. So you know what it is, kind of the background, it adds static typing to JavaScript, a language famous for being duct typed and dynamic and highly confusing to understand what the heck is going on in some large applications. So let's talk about why you might want to pretty much leave all the benefits of JavaScript behind and go into a JavaScript-like language that adds typing and makes things strict and more uh, maybe difficult to use. Uh, the first reason for me, the first big reason for me, the very personal reason, is that in adding static typing to your JavaScript code via TypeScript, it allows TypeScript to enforce your types and your APIs across your separate TypeScript files through its compilation process. Which is to say that if you have some method that accepts two arguments, the first one being a object, the second being a Boolean, that becomes documentation that's in line in the function and also then enforced via TypeScript itself. Uh, if I could just have that one small piece of TypeScript, just having there be enforced documentation of arguments to functions, that's alone worth its weight in gold. I can't tell you how many times I've dealt in some old piece of code, seen some function with some argument and had no clue what it was. Was it a string? Was it a number? Was it a boolean? Was it an object? I just have to kind of guess based upon how it's being used in that function. Whereas if it was a TypeScript file, that annotation of what it is would be right there in line. And that is beautiful. In addition, TypeScript provides, because it has all this extra information about your application, it provides a wonderful developer experience, which is in many ways due to the great IDE experience. In particular, VS Code. The integration between TypeScript and VS Code is beautiful. The ability to open up your VS Code editor and be automatically prompted for the right type of value to give to a function or to actually have refactorings be enabled by the IDE itself. So I can actually say change this um, variable name or do all these things that if you're a Java developer or have ever done Java developer development in the past, you know that Java IDEs are wicked powerful. Uh, it's almost impossible to write a Java application without an IDE, nor would you want to, because the things you can do in that IDE is incredible. And that's because it has all this information about your application. Well, with TypeScript, you kind of get that as well. So you actually can have all these nice, fancy features right in your TypeScript code, and that's sweet. And speaking back to my first point about there being a uh, code-enforced documentation via types, if you have a very large team, a very large number of people working on one product, this is immeasurably beneficial to you because a teammate will no longer have to guess how to use your application because all the annotations are right there. And that's awesome. Another reason that TypeScript is a good buy-in right now is that it's definitely the market leader. I mentioned before that there is kind of a horse race between TypeScript and FlowType and TypeScript has definitely taken the lead in that. So in terms of making a good bet in terms of your time investment, TypeScript is definitely the best one right now. TypeScript is also very great with community feedback. They are awesome just to interact with the community at large, to give them an update about what they're planning to do, what they've been doing. They have a public roadmap of what features they're trying to add to TypeScript. They have a blog post every month. They actually have a release almost every month as well, except for the holiday seasons where, I mean, I took a break too, so I can't really fault them that as well. But that is an under active and also steady development, which is just great to see. They're, some of the PRs on the TypeScript repo are uh, 60,000 line additions and like 500 line subtractions because that's what you have to make when you're making a type system. I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't write it. I just use it and that's what's fun about it. TypeScript also has support for many of the large uh, JavaScript frameworks. Angular 2 and up was built with TypeScript to begin with. It has uh, TypeScript has built-in support for React. It has extensions for JSX itself because it's that popular and you kind of have to support it. Vue.js is just JavaScript, and because Vue is just JavaScript, it means that TypeScript also supports it. There's uh, definition files that make you get all the information for the Vue API right in your TypeScript code as well, so it's a very easy experience to uh, code with. And that's another reason why TypeScript is great, because in some ways, it helps you learn while you go, because it has all this type information about an application. So if you're using uh, Vue and you have some uh, object you're calling, 
because TypeScript knows all the methods available, it'll actually auto show all those methods with inline documentation, which makes for an even better learning experience as well. I think the most powerful reason that you should start thinking about TypeScript is that you can incrementally adopt it. It is not a all or nothing thing. If you have an existing JavaScript application, they, they definitely focus on making it an easy story to gradually migrate to becoming a TypeScript application. And that is what you kind of need for any type of project, whether it's new or old, to have that be there be flexible, to not have it just take over your entire tool chain, but be a part of it as well. That's kind of the high level of overview about what TypeScript is. You might already know about what this, what it is, but I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page before I start delving into more specifics. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about actually getting a TypeScript environment working on your local computer. So we'll do some little tappa 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 on my little desktop here. My laptop's so old, you always hear the fan when I start doing a, a screen capture, but eventually I'll get a new computer when I start making millions of dollars on this YouTube channel, which will happen when I am 64. And I'm 60 right now, and the age that I've grown with is just, you know, you can just see it. 60 years old, do you believe that? Because you shouldn't, it's a lie, it's a bold-faced lie. Thanks for tuning in this week, I'll see you again next week. Let me know what you think about this video, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you again next week. It's been beautiful talking to you, as always. See you again, Charlie, or Bob, or Kathy, or Selma, or Claire, or Dylan. I don't know. Is anybody out there with those names? Because if I hit even one, I'd be a happy person.